Hey guys, uh, Darren here from Fitness Artist in Clifton Park. Uh, we were given a couple questions that uh, are frequently asked questions and uh, we're going to address a couple of them. So, uh, one of the questions that gets asked uh, a lot of me is um, how often I should take a rest day? So, my kind of feelings on the rest day situation is, is that I feel it's important, at least for myself, and I'll speak mostly of, of myself, uh, that I should have a rest day every once in a while, but again, um, it depends on what your thoughts are on an actual rest day. That means no activity, or does that mean, you know, kind of low-grade activities like walking or maybe going out for a bike ride or something like that. Um, those days that I don't actually lift or work out, uh, I will say that I do have a tendency to do something active every day. Uh, like I said, a lot of times, uh, again, I have a daughter, most of you guys know that, and uh, a lot of times we like to take walks around the neighborhood. Um, just out to, just to be out and get some air and whatnot and, and just move around. Uh, now that I got her riding a bike, we might be doing that a little bit more. Uh, also, um, we take the skateboard out. So again, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll look to that type of uh, activity uh, if I'm not gonna lift. Uh, again, because I am an active person, but as far as recovery, if you guys are crushing yourselves five days a week, or for that matter, you know, every day, some people are out there just crushing every day. Um, I think that it is important to have some sort of uh, recovery time. So uh, as far as things like, um, you know, classes and, and lifting, which I know a lot of us uh, nowadays are, are, are limited to what we can do, I think that it is important to make sure that um, there is some sort of recovery that's happening uh, on a pretty regular basis so that you do have time to, uh, for the muscles to recover to rebuild uh, stronger, that's part of the process. But uh, again, that doesn't mean that you have to just take a full day off from any kind of activity. Uh, hope that answers uh, that question for you. One of the questions I get asked a lot is what I should be doing on my off days. And to that I would ask, what are you doing on your on days? If you're somebody that works out six days a week, I would suggest that that rest day truly is that, you rest. You sleep in a little bit, be kind to your body, uh, do some flexibility, mobility, restorative yoga, something that makes your body prepared and well rested for that upcoming week. If you're somebody that your rest day is considered a day at home, maybe you don't get to the gym, um, what I would recommend is an at-home workout. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Just think about all the major movements that you do which would be a squatting motion. Uh, you can add load to that with just bands or light weights if you're not comfortable. Uh, if you're newer to exercise or not very confident on your form, um, we can certainly help with that too. And then your split stance, which is basically your lunge position. And deadlifting is tough if you haven't done it before at home, just getting the right uh, form. So there's other things you can do with that same movement pattern like bridges. And again, we can uh, give you suggestions or work with you on that. And then you also wanna think about getting your heart rate up. So something that uh, you feel comfortable doing, whether that be jumping jacks, um, you could skip rope, you could do any type of junk, jumping movement, or if you have issues with knees or any other reasons that you can't be jumping, there's also some low impact options as well. Um, so I'd recommend as long as you're getting in, you know, five to six days um, that you're moving. And again, it doesn't have to be in the traditional gym. I'd say you're doing a really good job and to keep it up. Any questions, just let us know. Why is sleep so important for my health and fitness goals and how much sleep should I be getting per night? So we should all be aiming for at least seven to eight hours of sleep per night every night. And believe it or not guys, sleep is arguably more important than nutrition and exercise. So I always tell people get your sleep down first then you work towards the next steps. Sleep is when our bodies are recovering from previous workouts. We're rebuilding, repairing everything. So we're preparing ourselves for the next day. Um, 
Without this recovery, we're gonna have a pretty hard time staying not only energized, but motivated. And we're also setting ourselves up to be more susceptible to injury, which is gonna set ourselves way back, which we don't want that. Um, not only that, guys, but a single night of short sleep can actually increase your appetite the next day, leading to poor food choices, um, excessive eating, the list goes on. It's a vicious cycle. So get your sleep, feel energized, let your body take its rest when it needs it. I promise you, it'll be worth it. So a question I get all the time, of course, is what should I be eating? And I think um, to answer that, I'm gonna try and keep it as simple as we possibly can. I think the answer is we all know what we should be eating. We just don't really actually do it, right? We have our healthy meats, our lean meats like chicken, turkey. Um, you can you can throw your, your beef in there, uh, fish obviously. And then we have our fruits and our vegetables. And you know what, if you wanna throw some grains in, I'm not a big uh, anti-carb guy. So, uh, you know, I, I think healthy grains are good, are fine too. It's really simple, I think, when you when you peel back the layers, the Doritos, the cookies, the sweets, all that stuff, right? We need to limit that. But here's the kicker is that we don't want to just eliminate it. We want to limit it. If you eliminate it, you're going to end up craving it. And if you crave it, you're going to crush it. If you allow yourself the opportunity to have some here and there, then you're going to eliminate those cravings a little bit.